Welcome to NBA legends sharing some of the funniest and most ridiculous Kobe Bryant stories that you'll ever hear. These stories are from when Kobe Bryant was younger. If you would like to see more Kobe Bryant stories as well as any other players, let me know down below in the comment section which players you would like to see. These videos take a long time to edit and piece all together, so I'd really appreciate if you guys could leave a like to show your support. If we could aim for a thousand likes, that would be incredible. And if you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we have plenty of videos coming. And I don't want to keep you guys waiting, so here's the video. So you go to the league, you get drafted. You in the league. 17 year old kid named Kobe Bryant Walker. He, you don't know him. Be like, yo, yo, I'm trying to come to the league next year, man. Yeah. Tell me what it's like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yo, like, what's the deal with this shit? Is it? Cole, how did that go? Cole was crazy, man. I uh, we played uh, just a crazy story. We played the Spectrum, and the next day they were supposed to destroy the Spectrum. You know what I'm yeah, talking about? Yeah, yeah. Back uh, in the day, Spectrum was a dark, like it was, like it was gloomy. a great place to shoot in because it was dark and the rim is orange, so it popped, so you can see everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I remember playing, I had a decent game, it's about April, so we're going home, we ain't making no playoffs. My first, you know, my first year, uh, I had a better second half than first half. And I come in, uh, I had to do some, uh, some, some press. I come in, and uh, you know, the locker room going crazy, you know, it, it's just everywhere, you know. The, the equipment guys picking up stuff, people getting showers, it's going like this. So uh, I saw a kid sitting in my seat, and I thought maybe, you know, somebody's son in the locker room, they got, mm -hmm. and he just sitting there, I said, what's up, young fella, let me get right here. And he was like, what's up, yo, what's up? And I, I'm Kobe Bryant, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to come to the lead. And I was, I had just walked in the locker room. So I was like, who the, who the fuck son is? I'm like, who, who the fuck son is this? So he was like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm Kobe Bryant. What's up? What's up, yo? Adapting. I was like, all right, yo. Get, get, like, basically, get your ass out of my seat. I ain't yeah. saying like that. But I was yeah. like, let me get right here. So he was like, oh, my fault, my fault, my fault. And then he sat in the, you know, JR seat, because me and JR seat, he sat right here. So he was just like, yo, what's up? How is it out there, yo? I'm watching it. It looks fast. And he was just, his eyes, yo, his eyes was so, he was so intense on just wanting to know the next level and what it was like. And I was like, hold on, nigga, ain't your dad in the league, nigga? Yeah. You, you know, your dad. Nah, nah, I'm, I'm talking to you. And we sat there and Flip let us talk for like two hours. When the bus was like, supposed to leave in like an hour, he let me and him talk. And I was like, you know, for me, it was like this. I had to do this and I had to do that. And he was just, wasn't even talking back. was just nodding his head like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm coming, yo, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm telling you right now, I'm coming, nigga. <laughs> cool. I, I'll see you, nigga. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, you know, but we both talking like in a, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> then I seen him he get here. Uh, Preseason, we, we both messed our ankles up, so we had to come and uh, do the Whirlpool. And when you go, to, uh, we was playing the form at the time. Uh -huh. Staples Center wasn't up yet. So we, uh, we had to share like this little uh, recovery room where you come yeah. use the hot tubs and shit. And we were just chopping. I was like, you know, well, you know how your first year, man? And he was like, man, these niggas over here hating Eddie Jones. Uh, he was just telling me. <laughs> <laughs> he was hot. He was hot, but he, he had hot. a, but he was like, yo, I'm the eyeball over here. They don't really fuck with me over here. Look. My first year in the league, uh, it was tough not having an opportunity to play because I felt like I, I could compete with the best of them. Man, that's the type of stuff. <laughs> you know, for, quite frankly, pissed me off. And it was very difficult going through that situation. Watch this, I'm gonna walk all these niggas down. Watch, watch. And I came into the NBA, I was like, man, these dudes really don't work that hard. <laughs> it was pretty, it was kind of an eye opener. I was like. And then I watched him in a series in Utah where he shot like uh, the air balls. At the end of the season, uh, being in Utah and they were shooting the air balls in a situation where I knew I could deliver. And I knew I could come through for the team. And it just didn't happen. Taking those shots, coming up short, but not being afraid. He shot the air balls. He had his, he had the, I mean, and if anybody know Kobe, he did everything like Mike. The fadeaway, the tongue, he, he went ball. When that didn't work the first year, he was like, you know what, I'm gonna be my fucking self. Being compared to Michael is a great honor, but at the same time, I have to separate that for the simple fact that he's accomplished what he's accomplished through hard work. I understand that. Uh, Michael's a great basketball player, but I'm Kobe Bryant. So he grew his hair out, he started rhyming, he was rhyming in mm -hmm. Italian. Those shots weren't meant, to, weren't meant to be. But at the same time, I thought to myself that I'm going to be back. 
No, you start to get to see a little more of the personality. Yeah. You know, he came out with his first shoe, and you know, when I seen him with the hair, he was a different cat. And then we used to, you know, the thing was in, in the summertime, everybody used to go to LA to go to UCLA and play. Mm-hmm. He would be yeah. up there. So mm-hmm. th- again, like we, we're, we're hoopers like you. We mm-hmm. go and hoop everywhere. Mm-hmm. I want to see if everybody in the summer is working on their shit like I'm working on mine. So I would go around to Houston. I would go to Peachtree in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. I'm going to uh, Basketball City in New York, Rucker, all that shit. So I'm riding around, you know, I'm flying around seeing who was up. So I'm doing commercial stuff. Mess around, we go to uh, UCLA, and I saw him in UCLA. He looked totally different. Like, I go to the men's gym at UCLA, and it's late. It might have been like a Friday night at Westwood, uh, at UCLA, the men's gym. And Kobe's in there with his trainer, maybe like midnight. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, re- I'm redoing my shots, so I'm changing my mechanics. And so I'm just going in there to shoot some free throws. And I'm just going in there to do like just some set shots by myself. And I go in there, and Kobe's in there, and he's mm-hmm. lathered up. Mm. And he's got his guy. And uh, next thing you know, he wants to play one-on-one. So I'm down at the other end, and uh, he's like, you want to play one-on-one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's and I didn't, because I'm, like, like, I'm changing my shot. Like, I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not there yet, but I'm like, I got it. Like, I can't. Got to. I can't say no. And I'm like, all right, why not? You know, and, and this, you know, he's only 19 or whatever, so I'll, I'll have my way. And I could not believe the intensity and how hard he played. He competed on every possession uh, in, in that one-on-one moment. Nobody was there, just the three, you know, the two of us and his trainer. And I'm telling you, it was like a game seven in like late July. Like it was, I don't think I played that intense in the summer. And he was like, he was, I mean, you know. This like is he, what, second years? Coming off his second year? 98, he's 96 drafted, coming yeah. Coming off his second year. Yeah. And so, like, the work ethic and, and how hard, like, it, up until then, man, like, I didn't really work on my game. and I just hooped. Mm-hmm. Just played pickup ball. And that summer was when I started, okay, I'm going to start, like, working and getting better and trying things. And that, to me, was when I realized, okay, this, this kid has something. He's special. The, 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 you know, going through, having a strategy, working on stuff, all of that. Like, I enjoyed doing that. Um, and a lot of it I got from being, like, watching this kid, this kid younger than me, grinding. Mm. Like, getting after it by himself. It's like a Friday night. I'm all right. I'm wifed up. I'm chilling. You, mm-hmm. know, you know, I'm just wanting to go get some shots up late at night. And he's in the gym going at it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so that was, that was a moment that... that um, that I remember that was, I was like, man, this kid. Yeah, no, I remember my different. freshman year at UCLA is 98, so he used to be on campus all the time. We'd see him normally during the day, at night, yeah. working out, playing, it was. And, and, and you know, he, he impacted a whole generation now that they do that. Yep, yep, work. They put that, like, mm-hmm. you know, back in the day, you might go in five spots, five makes, yep, I got some shots there. up, you know what I'm saying? But like, he, he put the work Worked. in, and mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, hit the weights, mm-hmm. dunking that motherfucker, was talking shit. Uh, I mean, he was dunking on bigs. He was he was just a different cat from when I seen him. You know what I'm saying? I just saw I just saw him turn into this this animal, <laughs> real shit. But he we was, was both young and just trying to get it. You know, fighting for it. So I did want to ask you because you over overlapped with a young Kobe Bryant. Do oh, you yeah. have an early memory of him playing against him? A highlight? Something where you were like, "Holy shit, this guy's got it." Yeah, I was in the league and I was playing in Dallas. And in the summers, we would all – all the guys from the Philly area would congregate, you know, and you go play pickup ball at whatever college that particular day. So we had these games set up. Pretty much the whole Sixers team was there. And then whatever other NBA players or guys playing overseas or even some college guys show up. You'd have 30 guys in the gym, like great pickup games. And I walked in there one day, and they always had trainers. They were taping ankles, and I'm getting my ankle tape. You know, I'm going to jump in a game, and I'm looking out. I'm watching the game play, being played. And there's this dude out there, and he's, like, doing pretty, you know – pretty ridiculous athletic stuff could tell he was like young but he looked you know kind of scrawny but like striding out and like you know playing against eddie jones i'll never forget it it was an all-star for the lakers and you know they're going head to head pretty much and i literally said to the trainer like oh who's that guy i thought he was going to say oh that's such and such he plays at whatever college you know whatever he's like oh that's uh that's kobe bryant that's joe bryant's son i'm like oh okay i said how how old is he he goes he's 15 (laughs) <laughs> he's 15. He's going to Lower Marion. Yeah, he's. They think he's got a chance. I'm like, yeah, I think so. So then you're, and then I noticed what the thing that stood out to me over the course of that summer 
playing games when he was involved in was like to th- think about being 15 years old. First of all, just in general, how you view yourself, right? The confidence level to step on a floor with those type of players and grown men is, is a whole nother thing. Like I remember playing pickup ball and the guy would bring his son and like, hey, you guys mind if Michael plays? I'm like, no, that's fine. And the kid would just kind of you know hide, <laughs> but run up and down the floor. No, no, this guy, Kobe was out there like, no, no, I'm, I'm out here to do work at that age. Then that was like the first time. And then he and I, he and I, because his dad, he's, you know, I said, Joe Bryant, Joe Bryant went to LaSalle. That's my alma mater. So I'd always known about Joe. So then that was a natural starting point of conversation with Kobe that day. We started talking. And then over the course of time, you know, whenever I would see him, we always kind of talked and we talk, we talk about those summers and those games and, you know, just always is yes, but that's no doubt, man. That will, I'll never forget seeing him that day. I can literally picture it in my mind, like an oil painting, sitting on the training table, looking over at the court, and watching him go up and down with those guys. We were in Vegas, and uh, coach drew up a play for him at the top of the key to go ISO one on one. And as they're leaving the huddle, he's telling everybody, "I'm about to dunk on this fool. I'm about to dunk on this fool." Basically a one-on-one situation, everybody was watching those two, and we didn't know what he was going to do. And when he finished the play, which was dunking the ball through the basket. Here we got a dribble drive, change of direction. Oh, 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 What a play by the guest. Did you see where he jumped from? I don't think our reactions was because of the dunk. Our reactions was because he said he was about to do that dunk. And that's why we were just like, oh, my God, we cannot believe he just said what he was going to do, and he did it. And it was spectacular at the same time. He really finished the play, and that sort of, you know, let everybody know that here's a, here's a guy who's going to be special in this league for a long time to come. And it, it was one of the craziest things because, you know, you guys say stuff all the time. But to hear from a rookie who never really played NBA games said, I'm about to dunk on this fool. And when I tell you he crossed that dude up right to left cross, and, and I think Ben Wallace tried to take the charge. Oh my, it was, that was one of the special moments of Kobe. And like, just, you knew he was gonna take off from there. You just knew it. The young man that you think may be as good a shooting guard or as good a player as in this game, and that's Kobe Bryant. Very special human being, man. I mean, uh, like a lot of people know Kobe because of what he done on the basketball court, especially his career with the Lakers. But I've been knowing him since we were kids and, you know, very special human being, taught me a whole lot. Funny story when, you know, by the time I got to my junior year in high school, like I thought I was the best shit since sliced bread by that time, because I'm 6'6". Six, six. Uh, there's not a lot of height in our town. Everybody else is 5'10". And I grew up in my town. I ain't never leave, right? Mm-hmm. So my coach one day, he said to me, he was like, hey, man, you think you you, you nice. Like, you think you good or something, man. Like, uh, there's a there's a kid uh, right down the street that <laughs> just as talented as you. I'm like, yeah, right. You got to be kidding me. Hell no. Nah. He was like, bro, he's probably about the same height as you and... You know, he probably weighed 20 more pounds than you. He's probably way more athletic than you. I think he's probably more talented than you. And probably can <laughs> shoot, you know, from damn. a deeper range than you. Hey, this, like, this your coach? Damn, this this is my your coach? coach? And I'm like, man, this guy, he's just, trying, he's just trying to make me go out and practice and kill these dudes and practice. So I was like, damn, bro, like, really, damn, coach, you're going to break down my self-esteem like that? He's like, nah, bro, I'm telling you. And this is be- before the social media era, because nowadays you can actually look on Instagram, look on Twitter, and find out who's the great players uh, around you, especially in the state. And he was like, all right, we're going to match up with him. Trust me, uh, the, the team is the team is uh, Lower Marion. And I'm like, all right, well, we're going to see him. We're going to blow them out, because Lower Marion, Raj, as you know, is is a suburb, right? It's, it's a lot of... Silver Spoon kids It's the birds, bro. (laughs) It's the birds, yes. And, you know, I had all kids on my team from the neighborhood. So, you know, I'm with all the homies that I grew up with, and half them dudes thought they were better than me, right? Yeah. And Cole team, you know, looked like a private school team, right? He he, Mm -hmm. he didn't look like he grew up with, you know, the dudes that I grew up with. You know, we from the hood. Like, like, ain't no way we gonna let, (laughs) you know, some suburban kids uh, uh, beat beat, beat up on us. 
So yeah. I'm like, man, it ain't no way. But I'm looking at his game, and I'm like, bro, like, damn. In the layup line, <laughs> he down there doing 360s. You know what I'm saying? He doing the in-out double uh, crossover step back, shooting three feet behind the three-point line. I'm scratching my head. I'm like, damn, this, this dude looks for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? This week's Starters Showcase Big Game features Lower Marion, the number two seed in the Quad A tournament, taking on number seven Norristown in a quarterfinal game in the District 1 playoffs. Tonight, they face Lower Marion and their star, Kobe Bryant. That's, that's <laughs> impressive. But uh, wait, let's, let's wait to see when the ball is thrown up. And once, the, once that ball was thrown up, man. Bro, look, after that game, I went back home, I looked myself in the mirror, and I said, hey, bro. <laughs> I held my own, but that man gave that, that man gave us the business. You ain't what you thought you were. Y'all went at it though. Y'all went we, at it. We went at it. I'm, we went, went at it. it. You yeah, know. Hold on. Don't, don't 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 dim your light too. Now y'all went at it. <laughs> if this kid right here is outshining you, what about the rest of the world? So uh, that was my introduction to uh, playing against Kobe Bryant. And yeah. he came out and showcased his game, and you know, right right from there. That's when me and him start to 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 really communicate and, and start to get a relationship. Y'all play AAU together? Yeah. And we were also we also played on the same AAU team, so we were actually roommates and we were able to actually um not just play against each other, but also be become really, really good friends. And that was the first time I started to see someone that had, you know, the mindset you know, mm -hmm. of a killer. Like, like mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've been around a lot of great players, right? But I ain't never been around somebody like him that just had kill on his mind all day and all night. Mm -hmm. Like, it was basketball 24-7. Like, people seen that when they, when you hear mama mentality, like, people hear that late. Like, Kobe championships, you know, MVPs and everything like that. No, he had that mamba mentality at 15, 16 years old. Off the court, Cole was uh, all business, man. He was serious huh? at like 16 years old, which was crazy to me. I remember one time we were uh, playing in a tournament and I was like, hey, Cole, like, uh, you know, last night, uh, me and my cousin Spud, you know, there's a little bar around the corner that they thought we were 21 years old. Like they, they let us in. Right, mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, let's let's go there after the game. And he looked at me, he was like, nah, Rip, you know, I gotta get back to my room and ice my knees and watch tape. I'm like, what? At 16 years old? At 16 years old, man, you just wanna be a kid, right? I can remember being in a room late at night because we were roommates on all AAU events, McDonald's All-American game. Uh, Magic Johnson run ball classic. Dakota with the bounce pass and Brian jams at home and that got him up out of the seats and some high fives. It was many times where, you know, we were sitting, sitting in the room and we, we would just have just random conversations about guys we were playing against uh, the next, next day in, in the AAU game. And his mind was on the NBA. He was like, hey, Rip, you know, when I get to the NBA, you see some of these superstar guys out there in my position, I'm a dog. And I'm like, man, bro, like, <laughs> bro, we like 16. Like, like, them dudes is grown men. Like, come on, man. Like, 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 go to sleep, man. Like, I ain't trying to hear that. You, you dreaming right now. He like, nah, Rip, I'm dead serious, man. I'm like, bro, we got, you know. Shot, we play Shaheem Holloway tomorrow, or we play Tim Thomas. And uh, Tim Thomas was the number one player in the country at that time. And uh, Kobe didn't want to go to sleep that night. He was restless, and he was he would do this multiple times at night. He would just walk around my bed, because my bed was here, his bed was there. He would just walk around my bed, and he was like, hey, man, Rip, tomorrow, you know, they got Tim Thomas as the number one player in the country. Like, we used to, because we, we were roommates, too. Like, so all the AAU events, we were roommates and stuff like that. And I, I remember when he was talking about on your show, like he had the kill list, right? But you, you started off young, like, you know, we, we the same age, we grew up, but like you had a kill list at 13. I did. I had a, um, <laughs> I had a kill list. And so, you know, they used to do these rankings. It was Street and Smith basketball rankings. And I was nowhere to be found, because I was like 6'4", scrawny, like 160 pounds soaking wet. So I was like 57 on the list. And so I will look at 56, 55, all the way up to number one, who these players are, what club teams they played for. So when we go on an AAU travel circuit, I, I got to hunt them down. 
right? And so that became my mission in high school, is to check off every other person, all those 56 other names, hunt them down and knock them down. That's like that Billy <laughs> Madison shit, like, check. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Who was on your it. kill list at 13, bro? Well, uh, Tim Thomas. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's funny because, you know, we were roommates and it was many times at night that this dude just didn't want to go to sleep. He just wanted to talk basketball, right? And we were about to play uh, Tim Thomas uh, in a teenage, no, in a, in a Charlie Weber tournament in uh, Maryland. And Tim mm -hmm. Thomas was the number one player in the country at the time. Yeah, of course. Tim Thomas of course. was. Uh, Rip? Uh, no, Rip wasn't Not yet. because Rip, Rip and I were like, we were really close. And Cole was just in a room all night, like one o'clock in the morning, just pacing around my bed like, yo, Rip, you know, tomorrow, I'm gonna kill this dude. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like I'm like, Tim Thomas, like, first of all, you, we don't even play the same position as him, right? Right. But, but Tim played on the wing at that time, too. Like, he was surreal at, at, at that time, right? Because he was mm -hmm. a 6'9, can handle the ball, mm -hmm. can play inside, outside. He was like, man, I'm gonna kill this dude, man. He was like, after, after tomorrow, it ain't gonna be no doubt in anybody's mind who the number one player in America is. Like, they, they mm. saying, I ain't the number one player? Watch, mm. Rip, watch. Tomorrow, you know, they got Tim Thomas as the number one player in the country. I should be the number one player in the country. I'm gonna go out there and show the world. He said, watch, just wait, wait and see. And I'm like, bro, go to sleep, man. After tomorrow night, I'm like, bro, go to sleep, man. <laughs> we played up early in the morning, man. I, I like let, let's talk about this pregame, but oh, like, like tonight, let's go to bed. We got three big games tomorrow because we got to win the tournament. He's like, nah, nah. Look, trust me, I'm gonna have my A game. I'm gonna come out there and I'm just gonna destroy everybody that's out on the floor, regardless who's guarding me. Bobby Bryant at the other end, explosive. Wow. And Cole came out there and showed the world why he should have been the number one player in the country. I mean, he showcased his ability to score, to attack, and to dominate. Uh, we ended up winning that game, and uh, when you looked at the Rays after that game, Kobe Bryant was the, the number one player in the country. And then by the time I was a senior, it hit number one. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, here are two new videos that you may enjoy as well. I will catch you guys in the next episode. Please be sure to leave a like and subscribe.